Hey guys, let's talk about Jesse Joshua Shockley. Jesse was born on April 1st, 2006 and has been missing since October 11th, 2011 from Glendale, Arizona. At the time of her disappearance, she was five years old, three feet five and 55 pounds. She's an African-American female with black hair and brown eyes. Jesse's mother, Jerice Gaton Hunter, reported her missing from their Glendale, Arizona home on October 11th, 2011. She stated the child was home with her three older siblings, aged 6, 9, and 13, when she had wandered away at around 5 p.m. and left out the front door of the family's apartment near Glendale and 43rd Avenues. Hunter said she had gone to cash a check, and when she came home, the front door was open, and Jessie was gone, and her siblings didn't know what had happened to her. She searched around the apartment complex and then called the police. Around the same time, Jessie vanished. A 25 to 30 year old African American female was seen putting a young girl into a black four door 1998 to 2000 Chevrolet Malibu at Glendale and 45th Avenue. The child, who didn't resist, physically resembled Jesse, and authorities say they were looking to identify and interview the woman. She had black hair pulled back into a bun and weighed about 120 pounds. An extensive search of the area turned up no sign of Jesse. She has never been heard from again. Hunter had a history of child abuse in Vallejo, in, in Vallejo, California, where she lived prior to moving to Arizona. In October 2005, Hunter was charged with five felonies, four counts of corporal injury to a child, and one count of torture. She allegedly whipped her three- and seven-year-old children with an extension cord and a belt. She also punched her 14-year-old son during an argument, and he said she frequently beat him with sticks. At the time of the abuse charges were brought against her, Hunter was married to George Edward Shockley, a convicted S.O. who would become Jesse's father. He participated in some of the beatings and faced charges of child abuse, as well as failure to register as an S.O. He's still in prison. All of Hunter's children stated the abuse had been going on for years, and the judge presiding over the case said she, quote, never ever should have had children, unquote. Jesse's parents are now divorced. In 2006, Hunter pleaded no contest to the four counts of corporal injury to a child and the torture charge was dropped as a result of the plea agreement. She was sentenced to eight years in prison, served four, and was paroled in 2010. Jessie and her siblings were raised by her mother's relatives while Hunter was incarcerated, and Hunter got them back following her release. Many of her family members were supportive of her, stating she loved her children and had become a much better parent since her release from prison. In the aftermath of Jessie's disappearance, her older siblings were taken into protective custody by Child Protective Services and placed in foster care. Hunter was eight months pregnant at the time, and CPS took custody of her baby after it was born later that month. She maintained her innocence in her daughter's disappearance and said she thought Jessie had been abducted by a stranger, but she refused to cooperate with the investigation or take a lie detector test. On November 21st, six weeks after Jesse went missing, Hunter was arrested for felony child abuse. Police said Jesse was a victim, and they believed she had been murdered. The child's 13-year-old sister allegedly told investigators that Hunter had kept Jesse in a closet, starting several weeks prior to report a disappearance, and hadn't fed her. Jesse's sister would sneak her food and water, and notice she had cuts and bruises and black eyes. The other children in the family also said they'd seen the bruises. The last day Jessie attended kindergarten was September 22nd, three weeks before her disappearance. After that, Hunter kept her home, claiming she had pink eye and ringworm. Neither of these claims had been supported by a doctor. Jessie's siblings said that the closet started to smell, quote, like dead people, unquote, and Hunter burned incense and spent a whole day cleaning the apartment a few days before she reported her daughter missing. Authorities confirmed that Hunter had purchased bleach on October 9th, two days before Jessie's disappearance was reported. Jessie's siblings' statements were what led to Hunter's arrest. She was released without charge after a week, however. Police said they did not want to create a double jeopardy situation in case homicide charges charges were filed against Hunter later on. Authorities began searching the Butterfield Station landfill for Jessie's remains in December 2011, saying they had substantive evidence that her body was placed in a trash bin in Tempe, Arizona, and taken there to, from there to the landfill. The searches lasted for months but turned up nothing. In September 2012, Hunter, Hunter was charged with murder and child abuse in Jesse's case. Although Hunter maintains her innocence, authorities believe Jesse was not abducted and in fact killed some days or weeks before her reported disappearance. In March 2013, her extended family filed a $10 million lawsuit against the state of Arizona, the Glendale Police Department, and CPS for Jesse's wrongful death 
They alleged the state that CPS was grossly negligent when they returned Jesse to her mother's custody and that CPS and the police ignored the complaints that Hunter had been abusing the child prior to her disappearance. At Hunter's trial in April 2015, her attorney argued that Jesse wasn't deceased and Hunter believed she's still alive. She was convicted of murder and child abuse and sentenced to life in prison without parole for murder plus 20 years for child abuse. Jesse's body has never been found. If you have any information, please call the Glendale Police Department at 623-930-3000.